This is a very short little piece, right? It's also from the, the next book that's coming out, right? Uh, and it's, uh, it's basically, uh, I'm going to be very brief in the intro, right? Because it's a very brief piece, right? But it's basically a, a girl, right? Who's living with her brother. And uh, their parents, their father had left them when they were very young, right? And um, so they were sort of fatherless, right? And uh, it was a sort of a generational thing. Each generation of family never had a father. Each father kept moving, right? And that's what the, that's the, th that's the background of the book, anyway. But the thing is that, so she found herself pregnant very young, and her own father had left, and suddenly the guy who had made her pregnant was vanished as well, right? So she sort of struggled for a while, and she moved in with her dimmer, sort of more sort of, not dimmer, but just sort of a very sort of, uh, not very complicated brother who was much older, right? And it sort of suited her and it suited him and it became a marriage of sorts, but without it being marriage. Uh, and then suddenly when the child was maybe six or seven, she was around 26, 27, she starts to realize there's a great big world out there again and she wants to find real love rather than living with her brother. And she does find real love, right? But she sort of doesn't really. He's the guy who calls the bingo and um, uh, she, he's the first guy she meets really. And she's going with older women to bingo and she meets this guy and she's mad enough him. But, she sort of breaks it to the brother and he sort of feels it's the biggest betrayal ever. He's like, how can you do this to me right after I said, I'm your sister. But anyway, the point is, they had this war, right? And um, eventually, she sort of having intimacy with him in the back of his van. And she keeps saying, oh, I'd love to have a date, right? So they decide to have a date and they go on the date. And the night that she goes on the date, the house erupts. And the brother is saying, that's it, you meet him. That's it, like, it's over, right? It's over, you're my brother, like. But I mean, the point is that, so she goes down, and the fact is, he never turns up, because it, he was busy, his wife was having a baby that night, and uh, he couldn't make it, right? Uh, so she doesn't realise this, and she goes home, and uh, he realises she's back early, and he realises that he's being a bit of a gun, right? And this is his advice to her. Um, did I tell you that? Uh, I don't use the word in this, right? But the thing is, uh, in Cork we use the word 50, and, I never, I, and I've often asked people, does that mean 50 meaning that you get stood up, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I've often asked people, what does it mean, where does it come from? And like, people don't really use it anymore, right? But uh, nobody seems to know where it came from, but it doesn't come from anywhere else. It doesn't come from Meadow, it doesn't come from Fermoy, it doesn't even come from Dublin, right? It's sort of something that we say for some reason. but. I basically had three fifties in my life, right? Well, I had loads of them, right? But three that really hurt, right? And I just tell you one of them. Well, one of them wasn't the fifth, actually, because she turned up and she told to clear up. The, 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 the second one was because she said, this is founded on distrust already. I stood across the road after the first fifty, afraid, thinking that if she turns up, I'd see her. If she doesn't, I won't see her, so my ego will be hurt. But not realize I was still there. But, but she was standing the other doorway, just across the road to stores, and said, OK, she never turned up. And I go, oh, geez, there you are. And uh, it was like, we're going nowhere, you don't trust me. I said, I don't trust you, you don't trust me, right? <laughs> I mean, the point is, but this is the big one, right? This one just had a really crushed, right? Um, it was coming home from a dance, uh, met a girl from the south side, which is really sort of, I just thought, spread the gene pool here, man, right? So <laughs> I, was, I walked up to Ballyham Park and I thought, God, Conan, you really love this woman because you're taking your life in your hand here. This is the 70s, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, peace and reconciliation hadn't really come into the whole thing. And uh, so I was, I walked home, but I ran home, right? <laughs> I was chased. No, no, but the point is, the following Friday, I was supposed to meet her uh, outside. And I said, OK, I'm going to meet her outside the roaches because everybody's going to say roaches like a cat in right? Yeah. And as Dan pointed out brilliantly one day to me, he said, you'd say, I'd meet you under the R roaches, or the E of roaches, because ah! the, the, it was like, there's so many people there, right? You have to pick a letter, right? And uh, it was like, is that the big R or the small R? How many R's and roaches? Or the big E or the small E? But anyway, the point is that, um, I said, I wouldn't do that, because we're too public if she didn't turn up, you know? And it just happened that all the north side buses stopped outside roaches, and all the south side stopped outside east, and so it's where the gene booms have to prove it, right? And uh, so I said, I'd be second more sophisticated, and I'd go down outside the library, right? And so there I was, on the appointed night, outside the city hall, right? Went to the wrong place. And I was sitting there, right, because it was so obscure to go to the library to meet someone, and next thing we're rubbing up past, he said, you okay there, Conan? And I said, yeah, fine, what's your problem, right? He says, uh, he was just sitting there, I said, okay, a date, and he says, uh, outside the city hall. I said, oh, geez, goes to the library, right? So he says, half he, he's driving my arse drove me up to the library, and uh, of course, she'd come heartbroken and went to be home, right? So I said, oh, God, what have I done, right? So I remembered the pain from the previous time, so I got into the number three bus, I knew her house, because I'd been there previous Friday, right? 
drove out there, right, knocked on the door, right, her brother came out, and I would guess the local skinhead, right, and he says, uh, he knew us from the north side, he wrote my mouth, he, he said, do you know what he said to me, he said, what's your problem? <laughs> I said, uh, I'm very sorry, I said, uh, is Mary there, right, and he says, oops, I gave up her name, you know her now, won't you? <laughs> she's the only Mary in the south side, but uh, <laughs> she's the only Mary in the south side in my life, anyway. But the point I make is that, uh, I said, uh, is Mary there, right, and he says, why, what's it to you, right, and I said, well, you know, uh, one second, he said, sort of, I heard him say, Mary, there's a fellow from North Side. I said, well, he didn't actually, Mary, there's a boot boy from North Side. Look at the next door, right? And the Ross is scuffing, laughing inside. And he came out and he said, um, I was thinking, oh, God, she's inside now. She's all upset. Like, I, you know, not for one moment, I think she gave me 50, right? And then uh, he goes up and he says, uh, she said, hey, she's washing her hair, right? No, I, never, I never knew what washing your hair meant, right? I thought it was like, you know. I was trying to to take the word in 20 minutes, right? So I said, hang on, right? He said, I'm waiting. He says, you'll be waiting. And so I was waiting, and I was waiting, and I was waiting. And then I figured out what I'm washing my hair means. And um, so that's basically, like, I, I know the pain of a 50 is what I'm saying, right? The bullet. So I, I, I had to run home again. Jeez, chase through the south side, anyway. And you know what? After all that, I've got you. I didn't bring it with me. It was great.